Derek, so this episode, since it's all about international, I feel like you've been kind of the international traveler for the past week and a half to two weeks here. You've been the Grand Floridian, you've been the Portofino. In like two minutes or less, give us your quick rundown of thoughts on uh, which one you liked more and, and, and how those trips went. Yeah, it was very, very funny because we kind of uh, took to the term uh, fiddly which is fake Italy, which is what Portofino Italy. was. I love that. <laughs> I like <laughs> Italy. And I was very excited. So we just did, just literally just yesterday, just got back from two nights at Portofino with my brother and my sister-in-law. So an adults only trip, no parks, just hanging out at Portofino. And I was like, this is going to be great. Just because I, I'm able to compare Disney's flagship hotel, the Grand, and then Universal's flagship hotel, Portofino. And I could safely say, as amazing as Portofino was, it was terrific, it was beautiful, great pool area, but man, I, it's the grand by a mile. It's just, there will never be another grand. Don't, don't go to Fiddly, go to real Italy if you're looking for, if the, uh, if the international bug uh, strikes you there. So. <laughs> yeah. That's because you haven't stayed at the other flagship hotel, the Hotel Haslam. We allow dogs here. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own room and everything. So. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The DVC Show. I'm your host, Paul Krieger, joined, as always, by my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. We've got John Sicari, a.k.a. Big Fat Panda, with us. Welcome home. Senior Sales Associate for the DVC Resale Market, Mr. Fiddly Derek DeBoer. (laughs) Hey, no. (laughs) And the one, the only, Jeff Haslam, who's, we'll get him a title outside of Finger Guns one of these days. (laughs) But uh, so happy to have you guys with us, Derek. It sounds like you had an amazing uh, journey through uh, Grand Floridian and uh, and everything. Had an amazing kind of spring break with your family. So that's awesome. Um, Hope a lot of you listeners and watchers out there enjoyed your spring break because the season has kind of wound down at this point. I think it's it's slowly on its way out. We're filming this right before Easter weekend. So that kind of normally kind of marks the the close of things. And I made it to Disney. We made it to Disney in like 50 minutes the other day. So that's, yeah, I wasn't that bad. I, I that's a sign that spring breaks near the end. Yeah. (laughs) And we're, I'm ready for it to be, cause it is, it's the parks are more crowded and, and, you know, honestly, spring break is, I feel like it depends on when Easter falls because if Easter is like more in March, it's a little more condensed and a little more intense during those months. If Easter is in like mid April, it's spread out, but it's prolonged, right? You get the crowds a little more prolonged, but yeah, we're, we're getting towards the end. Um, I'm ready for a little less traffic and less crowds in the park. Yeah. Jeff, you've been, you've been hitting the parks pretty hard recently. You, you no, went yeah, to- I- I did Magic Kingdom last night till midnight, and I actually did Magic Kingdom all by myself last Friday, <laughs> solo trip, and I did all the things that I wanted to do that nobody ever lets me do. It was the <laughs> best day ever. What was, uh, give us give us a quick rundown. <laughs> uh, I went to the Hall of Presidents, which nobody will ever go with me to, and I went for the first time in 20 years, I took the raft over to Tom Sawyer Island. Oh, and I, love I have thoughts. That is we've, fun. We've never been there. I don't. I've never been there. Have you? No. The only reason we've ever <laughs> wanted to go is because there's that little like quick service stand over there, and they've got some like chicken biscuit sandwich. Do you remember that? It's like, like Aunt Polly's or something. Aunt Polly. Sure, named after yeah. me. Perfect. It's P O L L Y. Whatever. It was fun. Chicken. I have thoughts. If you guys are following us on our our DVC fan group, I I said the best I Disney ever could have over there is to put a hidden speakeasy bar on that island and just not tell anybody. <laughs> and that's where the five of us will always be. <laughs> and have like the secret knock to get in. And yep. then, uh, cause there's all the caves and like secret passageways and stuff. Like I'm here to now, tell you that's a million dollar idea right there. Now I want to go and do things we've just never done. We've never gone over there. We've never done the Swiss family Robinson Treehouse. Well, that's going to do it today, it. folks. We're all going <laughs> to head to the parks and uh, yeah. have a have a good evening. Panda, what have you been up to? I know you've been in and out of the parks doing some stuff as well. Yeah, there's just filming stuff and doing the flower and garden thing. And I like the thing Jeff just did. Sometimes it's good to just go out of your comfort zone and do things that you like. Tom Sawyer Island is just to go through the caves. It's kind of non-Disney, but it's a lot of fun. 
That that is truly one of the things that my kids remember the most when they were young is when we did go over there and we just found like a checkerboard and we just sat there and we literally yep. just played a game of checkers. And it was just one of those memories that they still remember. Like they don't remember the 87 other rides and anything else <laughs> we did, but that particular memory of just, you know, sitting with mom and dad playing checkers on Tom Sawyer Island. And then we went to Jeff's speakeasy. It was a great hundred hundred percent. Well, it was interesting because I sat on the porch there at Aunt Polly's and Aunt Polly's is only open seasonally. It's not open very often, mm -hmm. but I sat there in the rocking chair and watched the boats go by, the people go by and suddenly Splash Mountain started testing again. There's logs going through and here comes a group oh, and the of music ears coming down the ride, mm -hmm. taking pictures. I'm like, that thing's got to be close if they're mm -hmm. on ride testing. So it was fun. That's it was awesome. a fun day. That's yeah. Awesome. We, did you hear, Amy, did you hear music from Tiana's? No, they didn't have music playing. Oh, supposedly they're starting up the music. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Amy's mom was just in town for her annual spring break revisit. Uh, we went to eat over at mm -hmm. Disney Springs. Loved it. Loved it. Wonderful time there. We'll have a review coming up over on dbcfan.com pretty, uh, pretty soon. And I think you put a, you put a little reel. Like a reel. reel. It's kind of out of the way, so... Definitely go back there because I worry about it not getting enough business. My my first yeah, where words, is it? I don't even know where it is. My first it's words were Wolf this Wolf is Puck. it's the right. old Wolfgang Puck Express location, right. which is basically oh. where security comes in from Saratoga, mm. or if you're taking an Uber, or if you're coming across the 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 bridge from the other resorts yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like you got to know where it's at, and you'll have to go I, all the way over there. Unless you're coming in from Saratoga, then you would probably see it, but. You know, go over there. It's the worth Christmas it. Shop. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing food. I did, though, as Amy, though, said, like, I was like, oh, if this doesn't get busier, I kind of give it a mm. year because it's just like tucked back here. But they're yeah. doing they're doing some cool stuff, too, throughout the summer months. Um, once a month, they're having the chef come in and do a, a private dinner night where uh, mm. she cooks for everyone, <laughs> explains the dishes, you know, autographs, merch, mm. cookbooks and stuff like that. It's a little on the pricier side. I want to say it's close to two hundred dollars per person, but for the experience, I think it's a pretty. She's cool... a she's a TV chef, right? She was on yep. Chopped or something. I correct me if I'm wrong. My mom was the one that knew that. I didn't know that. I've not watched but... Food Network since Emerald Live. Uh, I feel like so. <laughs> Out and Brown. Bam. Bam. Are... <laughs> Bam. What's their chicken finger selection like? <laughs> limited. Maybe they have Very curry limited. chicken fingers. Slim. They Slim. do have pizza, but it's. It's like non pizza. I, I don't know. I feel like you would find things because you ate at the the um, tangerine. And just just, just, just to be clear, you guys yeah. said you went to eat at Disney Springs. I don't uh, know how many yeah. people know the name of the restaurant is. <laughs> e the name of the restaurant e is Eat. E -E -T. E -E -T. Eat. Yeah. <laughs> so please go there, especially if you're looking for somewhere that has plenty of seating open, lots of tables. You know, you order, they bring it right to your table. They have one of those little tracker things. Uh, great food. Just yeah, definitely go over there and and visit. Eat. Jumping eat. back to Epcot, they have a really really great happy hour, and they have a really great mm -hmm. bread service. So anybody out there that loves the bread service at Sanaa, this is, I think it's almost as good, if not better. Ooh, and then combined with okay. a happy hour where the mm -hmm. drinks are like half off and stuff, mm -hmm. at a yeah. Time, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's the awesome. bread service has a pimento thing. This is really good with it as well. Yeah. Yep. So awesome. Jumping back to Epcot and Flower and Garden real quick. Panda, what's the best thing you've had over there? Oh, oh, the corn. The street corn with the they dip it in some garlic. I wanted to get that. <laughs> we, I know. They well, dip we it in this garlic. It was really standout delicious. We went there. We went there for the day. It was the first time Amy's mom was able to experience um flower and garden. garden and she loves flowers and she loves gardens her whole mm -hmm. backyard she is slowly progressively mm -hmm. taken over more and more of the backyard space mm -hmm. in her yard with garden over the years and she grows like absolutely everything so we we stopped for a picture with every flower <laughs> each one she she really <laughs> looks at my sister was the same way the like when we took my sister yeah. last year they look at every flower <laughs> i yeah. like that it makes them happy so yeah That's but now awesome. we had a we had a good time and I, I just think spring at Epcot is like the best time of year. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, and I agree. As, as if there were just less construction walls, it would be even better, but get we'll there. get there next year. Next year. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're there. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Well, thank you guys for joining us for this week's show and putting up with us just talking some random stuff because I know the title is nothing about what we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes, but I felt like we had to lighten the tone a little bit before we got into this week's topic. And this has been something that's been heavily requested by a lot of people. And essentially, we wanted to do a show talking about international members, international guests, and people that don't live in the United States that are potentially thinking about either renting, purchasing, selling, whatever it is Disney Vacation Club related, because there are some nuances to that process that are a little bit different. And uh, it's important to kind of know what they are and know how they can in some cases, actually benefit you, um, depending on what you're doing uh, and what you're looking to do. So we thought we'd dive into it. It will be a little bit of a heavier topic of a show, but uh, hopefully you learn something throughout the process. As always, before we get started, this and all of our content here on DVC Fan is brought to you by the world of DVC. <laughs> DVC resale market if you're looking to buy or sell a Disney vacation club Did you contract. take yours off the wall? <laughs> you did. You took yes. it off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> DVC <laughs> Uh, well, I'm 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 messed up. I'm I'm out of order now. <laughs> Monera Financial <laughs> if you're looking I can't you, find that sign. <laughs> if you're looking to finance a DVC resale contract purchase, they can help you in that process. And then the DVC rental store where you can try bef- cover up the thumb, cover up the thumb. Uh, <laughs> no, the logo. You got to cover up the logo. We can't use that logo anymore. <laughs> Boston. DVC rental store. Post. DVC rental store. If you're looking to rent some points uh, uh, or rent out your own points, I tried. Please just show some love for our sponsors. They let us do this amazing stuff that we do every day. So, um, and we thank you for all of you for your support. I don't think we say that enough. You know, um, Derek, Amy, and I, we do get to talk to a lot of people on a daily basis, and we do push through a lot of that to Panda and Jeff. Um, We probably have the most lively group Facebook chat ever, but a lot of it is talking about the amazing feedback and comments that you guys leave for us um, or that you talk to us in, in business. So thank you all from the bottom of our heart for, for supporting us in this endeavor. So now on to a, a very deep topic, international. Um, and I thought we would kind of break this up into certain different parts of what you might be looking to do as someone looking internationally at Disney Vacation Club. And to start today, I think one of the best places is a common question we get is people are looking to buy a contract um, or, or get into Disney Vacation Club as an international uh, member. And um, Derek, you deal with this on a day-to-day basis. Um, before we jump to kind of the resale process, I did just want to touch on kind of buying direct as an international member because that has its nuances as well. And and, um, maybe you can speak to that a little bit also. But from an international standpoint, one thing to just quickly clarify, if you are looking to buy Disney Vacation Club direct, the easiest way to do so is going to be if you're on vacation here in in Orlando, Florida. Doing it on site, um, that is going to be the way to do it um, because it just it really cleans up the process um, a lot. So, um, Derek, really take do- it away. Tell us about buying. And you really don't have an option, right? Yeah. Because you're buying direct from the developer. So if you're from you know outside the U.S., most of the time, I'd say 99.9% of the time, you have to buy it while you're here on vacation. So one of the biggest things about buying with resale and buying with us is that you have the ability to, okay, I'm going to learn about the club. I had a great trip. I'm going to go home. I'm going to ask some questions and you can purchase. So you can purchase. We help folks from literally almost every country all over the whole entire world be able to buy Disney Vacation Club, which is different. So when you're looking to buy direct, you almost always have to buy while you're here. When you buy resale, you can buy from anywhere that you're located. Just because of registration laws and everything else, there is no issues with buying resale when you're looking at Disney Vacation Club with us. So for many folks, that's like a, oh my God, that's a huge, huge sigh of relief. So yeah, that's a big one, big one. One of the 
questions that commonly comes hand in hand with buying is how am I going to pay for that contract? Um, Amy, speak a little bit to kind of Monera and the financing side of, of how that works as a buyer. Yeah. And, and Monera, whether I'm talking about Monera or Disney, you know, both are mortgage loans. So we both act kind of in the same realm. So whether you're buying direct and you're financing with Disney or you're buying resale and you're financing with Monera or some other mortgage lender that specializes in DVC, you're going to have the same uh, type. You're going to run into the same type of things. And there are two very, very important things that we always tell our international guests who are looking to finance. And the first one is that when you are purchasing and you are financing, you are going to have to have a notary um, for some of the documentation. And that is a legal requirement, uh, you know, in the States that is a protection for you, right? So that nobody can take out a mortgage loan in your name. Um, and so we always like to make sure that our international buyers know this ahead of time and because it can be tricky and depending on where you live for some in the U United Kingdom, that might mean that you are going to a solicitor. Um, some people have to go to a lawyer's office. Uh, you know, it just, it just depends. Uh, and while we are able to accept uh, remote online notary, uh, it's a lot more difficult for those who are international because you often need an additional step. Uh, I, I can never say the word right. They just call it a postil. Uh, so I would, I would always, if you're international, aim to get your notary in person. Uh, another option is sometimes going to the embassy, uh, wherever you live, the U.S. embassy. Uh, so those are those are some things to think about. So that's something that is going to have to be done. And every single buyer has to sign in front of a notary. If you're not going to be with one of the buyers, you know, at that time, you can have documents split where you get your own notary form and they get their own notary form. So, you know, if you're apart, you can go to separate notaries. Uh, but that's just something really important to keep in mind. And also many of the documents that require a notary will also require witnesses. It just depends on uh, the state of where the Disney property is you're purchasing um, and things like that. And in some and in some places, your notary can be one of your witnesses. It just depends on the laws of your, your state, your providence, wherever you live. Uh, your notary can usually tell you that. Um, and sometimes they don't even call it a notary. As long as they have a stamp that says notary public, regardless of what language it is, you can use it. Uh, the other thing that's really important to keep in mind, and this is usually the same also with with any kind of borrower that's based in the United States, is that uh, when you are ready to make payments, they're only able to make them in U.S. dollars. So for some, that means opening up a U.S. checking account. Um, a lot of people will do that while they're here in in Orlando on vacation, uh, somewhere like SunTrust Bank. Uh, a lot of our Canadian guests will use RBC. There are some online options, uh, but you always want to make sure that you have a U.S. checking account that has a nine-digit routing number that allows most payment systems to, to pull payments for you. So those are the two big things, payments and notary, uh, that I just feel like I rambled on about forever. <laughs> no, it's but it's good information that people that are looking to purchase need to know. And Derek, you and I were talking about this before we started the show I think it's important for anyone that is an international person looking at Disney Vacation Club to understand, as Amy described already, a lot of these are done for your safety. And another thing is a lot of these are mandated by the U.S. government, um, the IRS, and those are things that we have to comply with, um, you know, basically as people that are working in the timeshare industry, we have to comply with these things or else we get in trouble. So again, we're doing it for your safety, but also these are rules set forth for doing business in the United States. So it's not yeah. like we're making a million extra hoops for you to jump through on purpose. No, because again, at the end of the day, and that's why I think, Paul, this show is so important and I'm so glad that you did because we've had so many folks, because it sounds so daunting. Uh, I've had so many folks reach out to me and say, you know, could you guys do a show just to kind of, whether it's buying or whether it's selling, because it just sounds incredibly daunting. So I know that we kind of make fun and say, oh, this show's gonna be deep, it's gonna be heavy. It's not, because at the end of the day, I want everybody out there all over the whole entire world, and we know you're watching, thousands of folks every single year buy Disney Vacation Club with us. Thousands of folks every single year sell Disney Vacation Club with us. So I think a show like this will be fantastic because I will be able to literally cut and paste this link when I talk to folks and I'll be like, you know what? Here, 
watch this show. This is a really good show because it talks about <laughs> To put your mind at ease. So whether you're a buyer, whether you're a seller, at the end of the day, it all comes down to, Paul, exactly like you said. We're not doing this just because we want it. We want extra paperwork. We want you to jump through more hoops. We're doing it because you're buying deeded real estate, say, in Florida. So there's things that just have to be done. And that's why our team is so fantastic to be able to help you because we've done it, again, thousands and thousands of times. Yep. Yep. In terms of the buying process, any other last nuances to that that any international people should be aware of, Derek? I mean, I like to tell people that, you know, like any purchase, whether you're here in the States or whether you're abroad outside the States, it just comes down to, you know, when that offer gets accepted, you just have 10% or a max of 2000 is due in the first seven days when that offer is accepted. And yes, you can put it on a credit card. So for everybody out there that has a rewards card, they have a Disney Visa card, they have whatever, that's just that 10% due in the first week. That is for escrow that goes to the title company. Then like any other closing process, when you're a buyer, Amy talked about if you finance, there's different things. But if you're not a finance buyer and you just say, listen, I just want to buy this. I just want to pay cash for it. Then the balance due and anything else, closing costs, any 2000, due, you know, 2000, 24 dues are just going to be due via wire transfer. Uh, so that's it. So yeah, that's, that's really it. When you're a buyer, it can be very, very easy. Mm -hmm. Panda, Jeff, thanks for coming to our Ted talk today. Um, we, Happy we, to be joked, here. we joked before the show that, uh, that, you know, we, that we were probably going to be talking a lot on this since it's what we do on a daily basis. But I wanted to check in with you guys, like once we get to kind of like logical stopping points on this. So like in terms of the buying process, um, act like you're from, as Derek would call it, fiddly or something. Anything in terms of the uh, the the buying process that was unclear there, or any questions come to mind as you were? As I, I you were just speak it to the Derek. I don't understand what he said to me, so I I don't know. <laughs> maybe I have the DVC. Uh, maybe I maybe I do not. I, and we just lost all of our Italian viewers. So. <laughs> it does. I, know, I was, to was going to do an accent, and I was like, no, I'm going to get hate mail. <laughs> Panda is Italian, though, aren't you? Like, you have deep Italian yes. roots. So. Okay. So yeah. I can do it. <laughs> it does make me think I that I need, close, I need to check I the clothes. I need to check the closed captioning just, before we, uh, before we publish point, this. I just want to point out that uh, the pillow behind them is home. It's not me. They are not horrible, narcissistic people. Uh, <laughs> just so you know. Me. <laughs> oh, it looked like it said me on it. Oh. That's the, they, they redid Better it. Better than looking like the other thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I um, just got it. The wheels will come It's off. funny, though. I have so many friends from Britain who have DVC, and I never actually thought they are buying a deeded interest in the United States, and they are not a citizen. I, it never occurred to me that it would be harder for them, but I, I realize now. And it makes, so much, it makes so much sense for people over there because of how they travel. You know, yeah. normally they're traveling for upwards of two weeks if they're coming to the States. Exactly. And so Disney Vacation Club, um, you know, becomes a perfect product. I know Mark uh, used, to, used to write some articles here on DVC Fan. There may still be some older ones up on the website, but he talked about that in some of the articles that he wrote. Um, he's from Great Britain and, you know, his family travels over here for upwards of 10, 14, you know, days or more when they come. And when you're looking at cash prices for Disney Vacation Club properties, like it's, it pays for itself like very, very quickly in, when you're traveling in yeah. that in that manner. And especially when you're coming for, say, a fortnight, which is what it's called, I believe when it's here for like two weeks, I think it's called a fortnight, right, Jeff? As you nod yeah. your head. Okay. There I'm go. just happy that I can now put like in the in the in the tags for this video, Fortnite, and we're gonna get a whole other slew of videos now. Um, is it is, wait, is that what Fortnite means? It's the fourteenth night? I believe so. I believe and it, it. Yeah, it's two weeks. It's Shakespeare, I think. Yeah. It's two oh, weeks. okay. Right. Yeah. But what makes DVC great, Paul, exactly like you said, is because you're there for a long time. If I'm coming for two weeks, I don't want to stay in a regular hotel room for two weeks, right? So if I'm coming for like two weeks, I want a kitchen. I want a washer. I want a dryer. I don't want to stay in a regular mm -hmm. hotel room at All Star or Port Orleans or anything else. I want to stay in a one bedroom. And that's why, you know, folks from all over the world when they come for extended periods, DVC is such a perfect, perfect fit for them. Well, and first, <laughs> it was funny because he said all stars and 
Port Orleans, but I thought he was going to say All Stars in Portofino because he just got back from there and hated it so much. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong. When you're buying international, you tend to dodge RFO. R- wow, Rofer pretty good, right? Like they don't Disney doesn't buy back Rofer on international, do they? Yeah, I mean that that was always kind of the hidden quote unquote you know secret back when. Disney was buying contracts back. They're, of course, really not buying anything back right now. So it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're from Portofino or if you're from Iowa. They ain't buying contracts. So it's a great time to buy contracts. But, yes, that that was always the thing. Just because of the extra steps that are involved when it comes to selling your Disney Vacation Club, which I know we're going to talk about later. But, yes, Jeff, you're exactly right. So I would have people reach out to me specifically looking, hey, we're looking for a Bay Lake Tower contract, but we want an international seller. Just because we know, basically, no matter what the price, Disney's going to see it and say, oh, it's a international sell. Oh, uh, no. Go ahead. Because we just don't yeah. have the time. To, you know. Wow. Oops. Yeah. So, Derek, that's a perfect segue into kind of selling. So, if you are someone internationally that has owned Disney Vacation Club and you're now looking to sell that contract, um, give us kind of the lay of the land as to what that what that process looks like and um, kind of some of the issues that come up in in not issues, so, so to say, but just kind of the additional steps. Right. Because that's the main thing is we want you to know, you know, we've done this again. I hate to say it again, thousands and thousands of times. So we know exactly what to do. We know exactly who you need to speak with to get it done. So in the end, it's a very seamless, simple process. So when you reach out to us and say, hey, I live in the UK, I'm ready to sell my contract. I've loved it. It's been fantastic, but I think we're done. We always want to lay out all the steps to you immediately. So literally, the day that you contact us, we will send you an email with all the details. And I know I don't want to get too kind of, you know, in the weeds per se, but for anybody listening, we send you an email that basically goes through the process of something that's called FIRPTA, F-I-R-P-T-A. So we let you know that we literally say, and I'm just going to read it. So everybody that, you know, out there knows, we let you know that, <clears throat> Sellers residing outside the United States are subject to a mandatory 15% withholding by the IRS, federal law. This is not a tax, just a withholding. Only a capital gain, profit, on the sale would actually be taxable. The sales price minus the selling fee to our anus, to our agency, minus the original purchase price determines the capital gain, if any. You will likely have minimal profit to tax. To recover the funds, a FERPTA specialist will file a U.S. tax return for you with the IRS determining any tax owed on the sale so the surplus withheld can be refunded to you. And then we give you a company that we work with that, again, thousands of folks from all over the world use every single year with us. They're fantastic. Um, And so we give you all those details to get the ball rolling even before you list so you know okay, this is going to be, you know, something that I need to think about, something I need to do. Oh, look, Derek's given me the actual person who I could reach out to and let him know. But the second part, which Amy kind of talked about too, which is very important, comes down to that notary. So we always let you know. Second important detail, when we get to the closing documents about 45 days after it's sold, the deed transfer needs to be notarized and witnessed by two non-relatives. So you will want to line up a notary public In the UK, for example, that could be a U.S. embassy or a solicitor who is a notary public. So again, we give you a fantastic company to be able to answer any specific questions you have without getting too far in the weeds here. But everything is laid out to you so you know before your listing is even live on the site, before it's even sold, you can have all of your questions answered and know that you're in very, very good hands. (laughs) What are you laughing? Oh. (laughs) I think well, you put was... Jeff's asleep. Sorry. <laughs> I was interested. That was a lot. Yeah, come on. I'm, I'm trying to get all the details and give everybody so they know. It okay, was it was awesome. Panda, you were putting together a grocery <laughs> order. Don't lie. No, yeah. I really was paying attention. I thought there was going to be a quiz, so I was ready. <laughs> yeah. I do I do want to say something I forgot um, just listening to Derek, but uh, with Monera, with the payments, we do accept uh transfers through a company called wise or revolute and those are uk based companies that a lot of international buyers will use to make payments that will then transfer them into us dollars so that's an option as well to think about when you're when you're a buyer and financing even though i'm off topic 
<laughs> and and the thing on two, just kind of to talk about it now, it's much, much, much easier. It was a little bit of a challenge if you were an international seller during COVID. So during the pandemic, trying to get things notarized outside the U.S., we will always state on every single listing, it says seller resides outside the U.S., just so you're aware. Because again, 99.9% of the times, it's not an issue whatsoever. And it honestly, it never, never is. It doesn't take things, oh God, I heard if I buy from an international seller, it's going to take six years for me to close on my contract and be able to get my points. It's not. It's not the case. We let you know. But again, because we tee up the seller so well, so er everything, you wouldn't even know it. But we just give it to you as a FYI. That's all. Hmm. Yep. And again, I, I think it's I, like you said, it's a lot easier now because of technology as well. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's that's definitely been a, a much uh, better part of this. But just doing more and more transactions, you kind of learn to streamline the process and it just makes it um, smoother. Derek, you mentioned this early on when we were talking direct and, and basically having to be here in person to do that. Are you surprised that Disney Vacation Club has never tried to figure that out better uh, when it comes to international? It just seems like a very big missed opportunity for direct sales. Obviously, it's a big one. But it uh, again, it comes down because Disney is the developer, right? Yeah. So they're the actual developer of the points, the developer of the resorts themselves. So it's something that they just, uh, honestly, you can't, you can't change it per yeah. se. Um, but it's one, one of those things when you're a direct guide, I mean, it does help because if you have a guest you know, from outside the U S that literally it's not even a sales pitch. It's like, listen, if you like this and you want to buy it, I'm not trying to twist your arm, but I'm telling you, you gotta do it while you're here because you can't go home and then call me and I can't sell it to you. So it does hurt and, but it does also <laughs> help them. Because when I was a direct guide, many times I'd have folks that would want to go home and I'd say, listen, I totally get it, but you can't because <laughs> you can't buy it from home. But with us, you can go home and you can buy it with us. So yeah. This may be a dumb question. I think the answer is no. But if I go to visit, let's say Disneyland Paris, are there any DVC booths or guides trying to sell me at all? Yeah, or maybe. mentioning DVC at all? No. no. Mm -mm. I figured. They just don't have a presence set up internationally to sell. Yeah. It's a whole thing too, because it all comes down to registration. Because when I worked on the cruise ships too, it was, you know, people would ask and say, oh, when you're in these certain ports, like, you know, do you have to sell when you have to work when we're on port days? And because we're not registered to sell Disney Vacation Club in these ports, that was our days off, you know, mm -hmm. like you can't go to and sell in Cozumel, you can't go and sell in, you know, uh, blah, 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 whatever country it was, you couldn't do it. So that was basically a vacation club guys kind of <laughs> yeah. time off. Wow. I'm going to tour with you because I can't sell anything. My, my hands yeah. are tired. <laughs> it's the same as the stores, right? They can only be open exactly. when you're at sea. They can only sell DVC while you're at sea. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And to be clear, Derek sense. couldn't sell DVC when he was in Con Cozumel, but trinkets like Ugly Mickey's and Chiclet Gum, he, he was all about handing that stuff out. <laughs> he, started, he started the market on those. <laughs> so in terms of buying or selling Disney Vacation Club, um, all of the information that Derek has talked about is available over on the DVC Resale Market website. If you do have questions or obviously within the comments of this video or this show, Feel free to put any questions you might have and we'll try to we'll try to identify anything else that you know might might come up in terms of that process or just give the experts over at DVC Resale Market a call and any of their agents can talk to you through this process, put you in touch with um, you know the the resources that we have available uh, related to buying a Disney Vacation Club resale contract as an international person. So um, the flip side of this conversation um, actually goes hand in hand with owning a Disney Vacation Club contract, which is renting Disney Vacation Club points. Um, and that can also go both ways, either a guest looking to stay in a Disney Vacation Club villa or potentially a member that's not going to use their points this calendar year and they want to rent those points out. So first and foremost, um, like we started with buying, let's start with the guest side of things when it comes to renting DVC points. And it's very simple. Yes, you can rent DVC points. And it's a very simple transaction because you're going to probably pay with a credit card. And we accept credit cards at the DVC rental store. 
So again, this is a wonderful opportunity. Maybe you've not fully thought through that process of purchasing just yet. Perhaps as someone traveling for a fortnight, you want to try several different resorts, you know, go for the first seven days to Boardwalk and then the second seven days to Riviera. Uh, You can do that and DVC Rental Store really allows that to happen as a guest. So from a guest perspective, it's a very easy process. Um, For a member perspective, um, it's a little bit different. And this goes back to the disclaimer that I gave earlier in the show, which is that Uncle Sam likes to get involved, and it's not something that we cause. It's just the process of doing business in the United States. So any any sales of your Disney Vacation Club points, so you're not going to use them this year, you want to rent them to someone, and you want to get cash for them. Any kind of income transaction is deemed taxable income by the IRS. So essentially, they need to get their cut of that taxable income. And you, as someone internationally, then essentially have to file an international tax return if you are going to get paid. So the requirement for renting out your Disney Vacation Club points as an international member is you have to essentially get what's called an ITIN or an international tax ID number. This would be very similar to what is a U.S. social security number. Um, It is not the same as a Canadian social insurance number. We have a lot of Canadian individuals looking to rent their points, and they put in the information of their social insurance number. Unfortunately, that does not fly with the IRS, and so you do have to go through that ITIN process. And I am very upfront about it. This is kind of a daunting process to apply for an ITIN because of the fact that, unfortunately, the IRS is not quick with anything. They take their jolly time, and so it can take upwards of six to eight weeks or more to receive that ITIN if you did everything in that process correctly. Now, on our website over at dvcrentalstore.com, under the Members tab, there is a little International Members tab that says basically how to proceed with this process. Also, our member management team and our accounting team is there to help you in case you would need any supporting documentation or letters in receiving that ITIN. But I put this as a disclaimer. Maybe you're not thinking of renting points just today, but it's a potential for you, you know, a couple months down the road. Plan ahead, move forward, get that process done, um, and that's going to make the make the path to renting those points a lot cleaner. Now, on the flip side of that, something new that's kind of developed recently is our swap program over at the DVC Rental Store, which fully alleviates this entire problem because we're not actually paying you for your Disney Vacation Club points. You are swapping your points for, let's say, a Disney cruise or a trip to Universal Orlando or a beach vacation or one of the many different things that we're now swapping points for. In that circumstance, we don't require you to get an ITIN because it's deemed an equal exchange by the IRS we're not paying you out any funds and so it's a very simple um, you know swap or exchange transaction and we've seen a lot a lot more uh, international people choosing that option because it's Mm -hmm. just so seamless and then that's essentially what they're trying to do they just have chosen not to go to disney this year for their vacation or go to a disney vacation club property this year for their vacation but they are planning to do something else whether it be a sandals resort a beaches resort um a little birdie told me that pretty soon we're going to start swapping for royal caribbean cruise vacations so there are a lot of different um, swap opportunities out there. I was told that that word should not be used, but I like to use it anyhow. Um, Jeff, uh, Jeff's just over here, just shaking his head. That's like, worse yeah, than I just, ever. I just, I'm, I want to. I think we should start a pool in the group right now. Paul just got done bagging on the IRS. Let's see how long it takes for him to get audited. See right. From the IRS we just did show. our taxes yesterday, so <laughs> yeah. take mercy on us, please. But um, but yeah, that's uh, the only last point that I wanted to bring up is if you do go through the process of getting an ITIN and everything, to Amy's point earlier regarding a U.S. bank account, if you were to receive funds for renting your DVC points, um, our tried and true method of paying international members is PayPal because it's the most seamless process. Um, if you have set up an, a U.S. bank account, then we can proceed and 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 
and process those funds to that U.S. bank account. We unfortunately cannot do any direct deposit or ACH to an international bank account, nor can we send a check internationally. So PayPal or if you've set up that U.S. bank account. But PayPal, normally I, I tell all members, PayPal is the way to go to get paid because it's instantaneous. You, you don't have to wait for it. It's just very fast, smooth transaction of a process. But um, Panda, Jeff, renting DVC points as an international guest or member. Thoughts, questions? I I didn't know that it, it's considered an equal exchange. So that I can see why it's very attractive to international renters because that just seems like a way easier process. I, Ooh, I've had to apply for a regular business, you know, ITN number, and it is... It's a process. I can't yeah. imagine how internationally it, it's more complicated, but I, yeah, I, and and truthfully, it's uh, the the swap option is great, even if you are someone located in the United States and you're you're telling yourself, I'm just planning to take these funds and put them towards a Disney cruise because you are saving on that tax obligation because essentially you wouldn't receive a 1099 for the yeah. earnings um, on that swap since it's deemed an equal exchange. So you're harnessing that full. Now up to twenty dollars per point payout, depending on you know your resort, the 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 time frame in which you're renting and all of that. But you know currently now DVC Rental Store is paying up to twenty dollars per point. So you're harnessing that full value versus having to set a little bit aside for taxes at the end of the calendar year. So you do get more bang for your buck, and you're able to put those funds towards that vacation. And we also allow um, both you know any member. If you don't necessarily have that vacation in mind yet, but you do know that's how you kind of want to use these funds, we can hold those funds for you. Um, same with international members that are kind of working through that ITIN process. If you kind of, if your points are in a jam, they're going to be expiring within the next six months. And now you know you have to do this ITIN process and it's going to take eight weeks or more. We will work with you to kind of get the points rented, sit on the funds. And then once you have that I 10, we can then pay those out. So, um, we do have a lot of flexibility and I would just kind of say, um, head to DVC rental store.com kind of, uh, just reach out to our member relations team. We're very well versed in working with international members to kind of make that work for you in whatever your circumstance is. Because Derek, you mentioned earlier in the show that, it was kind of a process during COVID um, in terms of FERPTA and all of that kind of stuff. And it really slowed down the process and, and caused a lot of hiccups. You want to talk about problems um, in terms of renting points. Um, you know, a lot of members, we still, I know of a member still today that has had, had basically funds that have been then riding with us um, until now. And they're just now taking their cruises on those funds just because of all of the hoops that they had to jump through as well as, you know, certain countries had longer, um, travel related bans and restrictions in place. So, you know, we are just now getting past some of the cleanup work on all of that yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and, and to just one thing, if anyone's wondering what we definitely will not do <laughs> is if you are an international buyer, we're not going to go through like Paul just said in his 49 minute, monologue there is that we will not do a international buyer to an international seller. So we will let you know right up front and say, listen, I know you like this listing. Let us find you something else just because of the process involved from international to international is nothing that anybody wants to get involved with. So we'll find you something else. Don't worry about it. You'll find yourself on a watch list if you start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for Derek. Um, do international buyers get bucket hats? <laughs> they, they, are you asking for one, Jeff? I, I could use a bucket hat. I don't have a bucket hat. Oh, sweet. Thanks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. They don't pre-plan anything. That was planned. <laughs> we pre-planned none of this except that bit. <laughs> Jeff and I have been talking about that for like weeks. <laughs> oh my goodness. And, and, and Paul, speaking again to uh, keep things light, I love your shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, it, it, is is a newer, it is a newer Roosevelt's shirt. Uh, it's part of their spring collection. I feel like at the Krieger house, we have completely revamped our entire wardrobe over the course of the past two to three weeks because we are going on Icon of the Seas uh, in Ooh. less than three weeks. 
And so uh, we so are excited. super excited, but we felt we needed to be a little bit more tropical. So I love it. Try awesome. and- I, think, I think I got the email today that had that shirt in it. Did you? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, their, their spring line is, is pretty good. We are, like, yeah, really we are like not sponsored by Roosevelt's, but if they want to, if you're listening and uh, you, you, you want, you, you, <laughs> you want me to wear more of this and you want Panda and Derek and, and Jeff to all wear this, then, you know, just sign us up. Not even. And Derek I changes mean, shirts totally a lot. Wear. So I need more oh, Disney I clothes. I, made, I, oh, yeah. I almost bought like a Portofino shirt, but I couldn't find anything that I kind of like. So I just went with my classic Florida State because my son Owen is a freshman at Florida State. So go Knowles. Uh, but yeah, that is today's clothes. So yeah, Paul, very, very cool shirt. You too, Thank Panda. You. It'll and be Jeff. the shirt. It'll be the shirt for the next two shows too, because I'm not going to do a wardrobe change. <laughs> So. Well, I will. <laughs> um, Paul, you Jim, guys are taking the train down for your. Yes, we your are. And we cruise, are going right? to, we're going to film uh, and just get as much information on taking the bright line uh, from MCO to, we're going to Miami. Uh, it also goes to Fort Lauderdale, right? It does. And they're um, building a new station now that will be a hop, skip and a jump away from Port Canaveral. So yeah, um, I are assume you- that they'll have transportation like by bus or something that'll easily get you to the port then when you get off the station. Are you doing just the standard train or like that uh, VIP train? Because I've heard (laughs) that the extra money is like supposedly super, super worth it to pay. So here's the thing. Yeah, we're not. Here's the thing. (laughs) I heard it was. The the conversation about taking this train has been going on for the past six months. Um, And we have gone back and forth for so long about it because of the cost. I can understand if you are flying from somewhere um, and taking that train to the port is worthwhile as compared to an Uber or a rental car or something like that. But from a local perspective, I could not justify the price for a very long time as compared to just everyone hopping in a car together and driving directly to the port. Like, Like we compared parking fees and everything that way. But I just kind of felt like overall, now maybe my opinion will change, but, um, we'll see. Um, we did. I we, see Paul sitting with like chickens and things and him going, I should have justified <laughs> the price. <laughs> it still should be pretty. I mean, it's the bright line. So it's the new, I, I don't think chickens are allowed that I know of. <laughs> there was a whole big debate about luggage though, because we were like, Oh, we still don't know. So we, stay it's going to be a game time decision. So yeah, Derek, to answer your question, we may be upgrading to VIP if our luggage does not qualify for carry on status. <laughs> no, or- I don't think the VIP is worth it. I, I mean, I get it. You get snacks and you get drinks. So I guess if you're going to eat and drink the whole way down, it's, it's worth it. Is it, it. unlimited? I, I don't know, but Wait, you didn't tell me that if it's unlimited drinks, I thought it was expensive <laughs> compared to it. Like the seat is barely bigger. It doesn't include luggage like you're thinking. So there's a lot of confusion on our end because uh, we called and they said the luggage, it was like a 40 pound maximum that you could carry on for free. But the website says it's a 50 pound maximum. And then looking at the, the, schematics what is the word i'm looking for no idea the, the size oh, yeah. of our yeah of our luggage I saw our these. our luggage is technically one inch bigger than what it says can be a carry-on but the square the whatever the whole thing i don't even know i'm don't ask amy briefly tried to justify <laughs> this to mean that we need to buy new luggage uh, but um, <laughs> but the whole like the whole whatever is like what do you call that word square or something anyway it's we're with square it inches in, or something I don't your even allotment know. your allotment cubic yeah. square don't I give up but so we're we're gonna see we might have to end up the paying we might be able to carry them on for free we're not sure they're really big suitcases so. I, I, yeah I will say though I I think that it could be a very good option if you're an international person that is uh, headed into Miami perhaps and then headed up to to Walt Disney World I think it it really alleviates that problem I think Brightline is a great addition to Florida uh, and it's going to extend all the way over to Tampa of it eventually um, to kind of move all the way around the state mm-hmm. um, so it's a great addition it's going to make it a lot less stressful in getting to the port of Miami and then also you know eventually getting to you know um, Port Canaveral, obviously it already stops at Fort Lauderdale, but, uh, it's a great option. It's just when you do have a car down here, um, it, 
you, you start to just weigh the things a little bit differently. But right. parking at the port is awfully expensive too. If you've mm-hmm, ever been yeah. on a cruise and done that, um, I think yeah. that it was over $150 for this cruise. If you were parking right at the port. Now there are places just slightly off, um, that'll then, you know, bus you into, uh, your terminal, um, that are like half that price. So definitely take advantage of those. But um, yeah. And to be clear, Brightline does put out deals, uh, like yeah. promo codes and things like that. So we actually ended up getting a deal where if four, if, if you had four people booking, it was, it was kind of like half the price. So we basically paid for four people what it costs for two. So that's always something yeah. to also just keep an eye on. Um, because if we had bought it, you know, earlier when we were still debating, it was a lot yeah. more expensive and that's why we kind of waited. Uh, so but we'll definitely uh, be putting together a video mm-hmm. just of our experience on the bright line, just so that a lot of people have had questions just about using that service. We're going to take it out of, you know, terminal C at MCO all the way down to Miami and then all the way back. So we'll have a lot of information and content and kind of be more knowledgeable about it at that time. Um, and then also probably within the near future, we'll talk about the icon of the seas and talking about cruising with Royal Caribbean, because as I said earlier in the show, uh, I heard that someone would start swapping for Royal Caribbean cruises pretty soon. Not yet. Don't blow us up with emails yet. If you're listening to this show, wait for, wait for, wait for us to fully announce it. But, um, it is, it is in the works behind the scenes. And, uh, I know it's been something that, um, we've been talking about for a long time and we're very excited about because Amy and I are more addicted to Royal Caribbean than, Disney Cruise Line, I think, at this point. Same. <gasps> Sacrilege. Wrong. Except, except Wrong. for February of next year. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> we that's are, our only Disney cruise that's coming up. It's yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. February next year on the treasure is is our only other um Disney cruise booked right now. But um Are you going re- on there with them, Jeff? Yeah. Oh, you are. Oh. But, there, but there's been behind some, some behind the scenes action. I was trying to convince them we should go to Norway instead on a Royal Caribbean cruise <laughs> because of the price. So the treasure is so expensive. I can go to Norway. That's a good cruise. I've done it. It's fantastic. I know. I'm going to try to convince Paul that like our next big cruise needs to be like our next. It's going to be like 2026. We're, we're so booked up right now. <laughs> we have a lot yeah. of cruises booked. <laughs> Yeah, and plus you guys are doing secret cruises, so I think Panda and I are just going to go to Norway together. <laughs> we got we got the treasure book too. So. Come come to Bermuda with us in Heck August. Yeah. In August. Ooh. Okay, Bermuda August. What ship is it? It's on Liberty. It's it's a Royal Caribbean ship. I know you're oh, not I, a big on Royal. No, Caribbean. but I've done it. I I I would do it with you guys. It would be fun. Yeah. Well, come on well, down. Fly. It, we leave out New York City. Well, Cape Liberty, but. Old stomping grounds. Yeah. Now, All right. now that we've well, given the stalkers our itinerary, we can probably end the show, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see half of the DVC fan uh, audience on that cruise, but that is going to do it for this week's show related to uh, being an international member or guest looking at Disney Vacation Club. If you do have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Put them in the comments below. As always, if you did enjoy this show, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, that does so much good in terms of the YouTube algorithm. And um, if you've not done so on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you are an audio listener, please give us a review of this show because those things help as well to just continue to further the message uh, that we're putting out there, which sometimes is informative, other times is about cruises or trains and um (laughs) <laughs> random stuff but we try to have fun and we hope we le- make it lighthearted in the process and that is going to do it for today we will see you all next monday give me my hat back jeff <laughs>